There's nobody greater than our King. Amen. We search all over. And we will never find anyone that can compare to him. Glory to God. You might as well stop searching. Because the answer is in Jesus. Amen. 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 You approach a 97, 99 year old person and ask them, how long have you been searching? And they will tell you, 99 years. Have you found the answer? Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you have not found Jesus, you have not found the answer this morning. Amen. Glory to God. So we praise our mighty God this morning. We praise our King. Hallelujah. For the opportunity that we have this morning. Glory to God. Glory to God. Everything that we need is in Him. Hallelujah. Everything that we desire, it is in Him. Glory to God. We don't need to look to the left or to the right. We don't need to find any other source. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Nobody needs to take us to somebody for a reader, for a, for a, for a wash-off. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Point us to Calvary. Point us to Jesus this morning. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming unto him this morning except through the Father. Glory to God and we praise you. Bless the name of Jesus. So for that, let us just uh, take a moment out and just recognize him and thank him and praise him and honor him. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. We bless you this morning that we can approach your mercy seat. We thank you this morning, God, that we don't need to search. Oh, God, like those without hope this morning because our hope, it is in you, mighty God. Our strength is in you. Hallelujah. The answer that we desire, it is in you this morning, mighty God. For it is in you that we live and move and have our being. And we praise you for that this morning. We praise you for that opportunity, oh God Almighty, knowing that you are the hill from which cometh our help. This morning we declare that all of our help comes from you, oh God Almighty. All of our help, hallelujah, all of our help this morning cometh from you, maker of heaven and earth. And we will continue to lift up our eyes unto you. We will continue to lift up our hearts unto you. We'll continue, mighty God, to bless you and to honor you this morning with everything that is within us, oh God. We praise you this morning, even though the sun doesn't seem to be shining, but somewhere else it is shining. So we thank you for the rising up of the sun. We thank you this morning, God. We praise you for the rain. We praise you for the cloud. Hallelujah. We praise you for the permanent, hallelujah, of your handiwork. Oh God, your work showing knowledge. Hallelujah. We praise you this morning, my that we can call upon you, God. Hallelujah, that we can have a relationship with you. We can commune with you this morning. Oh God Almighty, we're not people that are lost, but we have hope this morning. Oh God Almighty, because of who you are and the things that you have done. And so God, as we come this morning, Lord, I pray right now, God, that you will search our hearts. We pray this morning, God, that you will tabernacle with us. Oh, God, you will see if there's anything in us this morning. And one more time, God, we ask for your pardon. We ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your cleansing, God. Every unclean thought. Oh, God, every imagination, mighty God, that were, that were not of you. Every attitude and action, Father. Oh, God, against your son, Jesus Christ, this morning. We pray, God, that you will forgive us even now. We pray that you will cleanse us right now. We pray that you will purge us one more time. In the mighty name of Jesus. For Father, we want nothing to hinder us this morning from worshiping you in spirit and in truth. We want nothing to stand there between us this morning, God. Nothing that the enemy might be able to point to this morning, God Almighty, to accuse us. For God, we're giving up ourselves to you this morning, our heart, our thoughts this morning, God, our minds. In the name of Jesus, take them and mold them this morning. Transform them and renew them 
this morning, God, as we come into your house uh, to lift up our hands and to worship you. We pray this morning, God, that you will be pleased. We pray this morning, God, that you will come down. We pray this morning that you will send the Holy Spirit, uh, the Comforter this morning, God, to abide uh, with us in the name of Jesus. Uh, abide with us in this sanctuary. Abide with your people that are on, at home. Abide with those who are on the job. Abide with those, God, who are in, in, in transportation mode this morning. Abide with your people, we pray, in the name of Jesus. And show yourself mighty. Show yourself strong this morning. For we are looking to you, God Almighty, our help and our strength. Lead us today, we pray. Speak to our hearts. Oh God, speak to our hearts. Minister to us today, God. Let us not leave your presence the way we come in today, God. Some come in empty, mighty God. Some come in disappeared. Some come in sick uh, into your presence. But God, let us, when we shall leave in your presence today, we will all say it was good uh, for us to be in your presence. Uh, mighty God, show up today, Father. You know what your people are in need of. You hear the cry of their hearts, oh God. You know every desire to Today, God, work upon the desires of our hearts and send your word today that will heal us. Send your word, God, hallelujah, for it is powerful and sharper, and we'll be careful to honor you and praise you. Hallelujah. We give you thanks, Lord. Blessed be your name. We praise you. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, and I will bless thee, O oh Lord. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. With a heart of
where you are, just worship him right where you are this morning. Just worship him. Just send up a worship. Just give up a worship unto our awesome God. Come on, bless the name of Jesus. Open up your lips this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God and send up a worship unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. We worship you this morning, Abba. We worship you, Yahweh. Hallelujah. We worship you, mighty God. We worship you as the King of Kings that you are this morning. We worship you, awesome God. Great you are this morning. You are Lord, our God, and mighty this morning are your miracles. We are people standing all this morning of your holiness, God, because you are holy and you are righteous. You're all together loved this morning, and we worship you, oh God, for who you are. We worship you, oh God, hallelujah. We give you praise this morning. We bring a sacrifice of praise into your house. Oh God, we lay it at your feet this morning. Let it be acceptable, mighty God. Let it be acceptable as we lift up your name this morning. Oh God, because we want to see your face. We want to see your glory. We want to experience your might and your power. We want to experience your fire. We want to experience your reign. We want to experience you this morning, God, upon our dry and our thirsty land. So we bring a worship before you. And we pour it out at your feet. We pour it out at your feet this morning, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
going on. Keep treating the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. I pray you have been blessed today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I once was lost in sin. I had no peace within to save my weary soul. I knew not how.
Amen. Online. Amen. Praise God. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. When you come expecting, yes. it always shows up. And I don't know how some people ain't ready to come back to church yet. Something is wrong somewhere. But there seems to be a sifting process going on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I want to speak to you for the short time we have left. Just to encourage you on have faith in God. Amen. And we're going to be looking at Mark chapter 11. Thank you, Jesus. And verse 22. Thank you, Jesus. There seems to be a feedback type of. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Maybe we just need a new place. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. When I was asking the Lord what to minister this morning, he said, encourage the people. Thank you, Jesus. Not that um, the messages you've been hearing from this pulpit aren't encouraging in some manner. Some messages are warnings. Uh, some are exposure to the reality um, of what and why you're going through. Amen. What you're going through. Some are to increase your faith Amen. and to push you over the edge yes. into letting go of your insecurities Amen. and totally trusting in God. Amen. But this morning is for encouragement. Thank you, Jesus. And therefore, I pray you're encouraged Hallelujah. at the end of this. Amen. What I find is that there are many that are under pressure because of what is currently happening. And even though they don't say it or they try to hide it, they are still concerned. Amen. And you know, it's one thing to wear a suit, blouse and skirt and always be smiling. Amen. And every time somebody asks you, how are you? I'm good. You shout, I'm blessed. Yes, I'm, good. I'm good. Everything is fine. Yes, and instead of being real, hmm. amen, you lie. Amen. And while trying to cope under the pressure of what is happening in this life. So I think as believers, we need to be real. Yes. Not only with God, but with each other. Amen. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost coming. Galatians 6 verse 2 remind us that we're to bear one another's burden Amen. and so fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. This was what distinguished Christ from all the others that claimed to be God. Christ took our burdens the others wanted to pay, wanted you to pay for it. Amen. Amen. They say it's karma. So you deserve what you're going through. Because if you were not bad in some time or some previous life, yes. you wouldn't be going through what you're going through. Yes. So shut your mouth and take it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And hopefully in the next life you'll come back as something else or something better. Yes. But Isaiah 53 tells us that the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He took our place. Could we not be Christ to our brothers and our sisters? Could we not help bear the burden? You see, Jesus, he left the splendors of heaven, took on mortal flesh to bear our burdens and punishment. That, 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 that should come with it. Amen. amen. And now he requires each of us that claim, amen, to be followers of him to do the same. Yes. So know that you're not alone in what you are going through. Amen. But help cannot come if you're going to keep yourself to yourself. No. Amen. That's true. And yes, the deeper truth is there are always some that will try to take advantage of your goodness and your kindness. 
And in that we're reminded to be wise as serpents, but still harmless as dove. Because we're always going to be among wolves, even in church. In every church that exists, there are wolves among the sheep. It's in your church, it's in the home, it's in the workplace, it's in the mall. Everywhere, Everywhere. you go, you will find wolves. Sometimes it's the members, amen. Sometimes it can be visitors, sometimes it can even be the clergy. Yes. Amen. So be wise as a serpent yes. and yet harmless as a dove. As a dove. Amen. Now Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And we see that happening a lot these days. But what we must be so careful about is who are we following? Yes. Is it the same Christ they are following and want us to follow? And if your charity is out of a good heart, the Lord will defend you. Amen. And he will take vengeance of you. If you let him and if you don't take it up yourself and try to solve it yourself. Put it in his hands and leave it there. Because what you will see is when you take it up to try to solve it yourself, it, is, it always causes division among the brethren. Come on, hurts. Causes gossip. And I'm sure you can even name a few to add on to this that it will cause. But it never resolves the way where everybody walks away peacefully and happy. Somebody is always left hurting. And that's why the Lord said, listen, vengeance is mine. I will repay it. And even though they do you wrong, you love them like Christ. And let me worry about what they did. Because there comes a time when every man shall stand before me and give an account. Don't cause it to lose your footing. No. But this morning, amen, the Lord wants me to encourage you this morning. In this account of Mark, we see... Uh, Jesus sent his disciples, if you read the chapter, uh, to go into the village and they would see a cult tied up. Yes. Uh, and, and, and he instructs them to loose this cult, cult and bring it to him. Yes. And the Lord uses the cult uh, um, for his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And we know the account uh, of the people laying the palm branches uh, in the streets and and their garments so uh, he could ride into uh, Jerusalem, amen, on, on this cult, Palm Sunday. Yes. And after he spent the day there, he then makes his way to Bethany uh, uh, with the 12 disciples. On the way back, the scripture says Jesus was hungry and he sees a fig, a fig tree yes. in the distance and he notices the tree has leaves yes. and the bible says it made jesus happy and i'm just paraphrasing yeah. for the sake of time it made jesus happy uh as seeing the leaves as if it meant there would be figs yes. which would satisfy his hunger yes. hallelujah i was tempted amen imagine the creator came to the tree he created and it didn't have any provisions for him John 1.11 says he came to his own and they received him not. Hallelujah. On the cross he cried, I thirst. And there was none to give him water. Amen. To quench his thirst. Isaiah said when we see him there is no beauty we should desire of him. He is despised and rejected. Talk about rejection. man Mark Lowry if you're into the Gaithers you've heard of him and he's always joking around his mother wrote a song one time and it's called I Thirst and it goes something like this one day I came to him I was so thirsty I asked for water, my throat was so dry, he gave me water that I never dreamed of, and for this water, my Lord had to die, he 
The spiritual law of faith is that when faith is displayed with works or faith is accompanied by works, James chapter 2, 14 to 20, amen, that the works, amen, the time of the figs was out of season and he walked to it believing for figs to be on it. The walking and believing, that is the works that has accompanied his faith, amen. That was the works and when faith is displayed with works, that which faith is directed to do must respond in favor of that faith. So the tree should have been obedient to the faith of its creator by producing fruit when it wasn't even time for fruit to be produced. And furthermore, it was not just any and anybody that was coming to this tree for any type of figs. It was Jesus himself. Hallelujah. The same one that said, don't you know that I could call 12 legions of war angels to destroy the world and set me free? The same one that, hallelujah, said, Father, if it be possible, take this cup from me. Hallelujah. But not my will, but thine be done. Hallelujah. This same one, it was not just any and anybody looking for any and anything. It was the living son of God going to his own creation looking for something to satisfy his hunger. It should have responded in a respectful manner and given the master what he came for. And this tells me that your faith can shift, hallelujah, some things in your life and your destiny and make it happen before time. You don't have to wait years upon years to see that thing come to pass. If you don't, if you believe and you don't tell, Jesus said, even if it's not in your season, your faith can speed up the schedule and put you first when you should have been last. The last shall be the first so you can wait on your season to come or you can activate your faith and couple it with works of belief and cause your season instead of manifesting two years down the road hallelujah cause it to manifest in three months that's why I always say when you hear a prophetic word go forth uh, to someone else, uh, don't be afraid to tap in uh, and claim it with faith uh, and then begin to live in the acceptance uh, of that word. Why? Because faith isn't aware of identity. It is only aware of its own likeness. Uh, when faith sees faith, uh, faith responds. Uh, you know, no matter if you're ugly or you're pretty, you're big, fat, short, tall, skinny. When faith sees faith, Faith will respond. It knows no identity. That's why the heathen, hallelujah, if they have faith, it will work for them. The godly, if they have faith, it will work for them. It knows no identity. Have faith in God. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of of things hoped for. So you believe what you don't see. In the evidence of things not seen. But I still proceed as if it is so. And your works of proceeding will cause it to manifest. Have faith in God. Hallelujah. Now faith. Now faith. Now faith is now faith is the evidence. Not later faith. Not when you're feeling well faith. Hallelujah. Not when things turn upside down. Now faith. Faith operates in the now. Even when you don't see it, it's now. That's why you believe in the now. Hallelujah. And you act as if it has already happened. So Jesus curses the tree because it broke the law of faith. He goes to Jerusalem, runs out the money changers and the thieves out of the temple. We all know the famous words spoken by the master, my house shall be called a house of prayer. 
So on the way back, they passed the same tree that denied Christ of its fruit. And they found the tree withered and it astonished them. And this brings us to right where we are, the verse that we started off with. And Peter was one that came to Jesus and reminded Christ what he had done and what the result now is. And Jesus answering unto them said, have faith in God. So I want to encourage you this morning as the Lord has said. There are some that are not sure of what to think concerning the future. You're confused and even depressed because it seems like everything is out of control. Everything seems to be turned upside down and inside out and it feels like everything has gone over your head and you're not sure how to cope you struggle between the virus the mask the social distancing and the vaccine you struggle between being obedient to earthly authorities and their COVID rules versus being somewhat what some may call a Christian extremist amen you don't care who gives in their rules if it's not in the Bible you ain't following it hallelujah but the Lord is still Lord of all, even during COVID. Hallelujah. His position has not changed. Satan and the things of this world doesn't cause him to sweat or have the shakes. I want to tell you that he is aware of how you feel and what you are facing. And I want to assure you that you are in good hands. Have faith in God. I've never met a problem that he couldn't solve. I've never seen a river or sea that he wouldn't split for you. Hallelujah. The very winds the disciples testified and the waves obey him. Even the nuclear bomb that everybody seems to be worried about. Hallelujah. If this crazy man, hallelujah, may just slip, hallelujah, and just press it, nothing will happen to this world because it's not in the hands of Satan. It's still in the God is in control. Even the Antichrist cannot come forth until God says to come forth. Everything is in his hands. The future of the earth is in his word and it must come to pass. Hallelujah. So I don't care who wants to act like they're bad. Hallelujah. Be like South Korea and show all their might with their armies and their weapons. Not one thing will go off and destroy this planet because the word of the Lord must be fulfilled. Not one shot or tittle. Hallelujah. Will pass. He's got the whole world in his hands. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember that song? He's got mother and father in his hands. Sister and brother in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. And he has you in his hands. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank Jesus. The Lord in his awesomeness and power yes. Thank you, Lord. will cause it not to go off. Yes. yes. Or even have the result that the scientists say it will have. Yes. He controls yes. the bomb. Yes. The explosion and the extent of devastation yes. that it causes. Yes. What am I trying to say is that we have a backative the world doesn't know about. Hallelujah. We have an anchor that grips the soul steadfast and sure, hallelujah, that the world doesn't have uh, the church even at its worst time is still safer than the world at its best. We have an anchor. We are anchored to the rock that cannot move. Grounded firm and deep. Hold fast. Have faith in God. If he couldn't keep you, you wouldn't have, you would already have been gone. If he couldn't feed you, you would already have died of starvation. If he couldn't provide for you, you wouldn't have a roof over your head, whether 
whether it's a house apartment shelter it's still a roof and whether it's brand new used or hand-me-downs amen you're not found naked he still provides for you if he can provide hallelujah for the birds that chirp in the morning to wake you up hallelujah what more can he do for you don't you know how much precious are you that lay hallelujah the flower that is so beautiful today and tomorrow's dried up and withered hallelujah are you not more precious than these your father knows your needs you're unique you're special called out to brought in above and not beneath blessed in the city and in the country you're the head and not the tail above and not below Deuteronomy 28 verse 13 it says you shall be above only that's favoritism God favors his children and those that call on him out of a pure heart thou shall not be beneath beneathism is a stranger to us poverty is a stranger to us lack is a stranger to us it's time the children of God started kicking out the strangers out of their life hallelujah you shall be above only Look it up in your Bible. That's what it says. Deuteronomy 28, 13. God said, you shall be above only. And he's not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should take back his words. Be encouraged and have faith in God. Hallelujah. But you see, here is where many people have issues. They see someone, and instead of being themselves, they try to imitate in some way or the other the one they look up to. God made you special. And I say you, because there are many out there that don't think they're special. Jesus tells us in Luke 12, verse 7, the very hairs on your head are numbered. And that's the roots of your hair. Why waste time numbering your hairs if you're not valuable? Many of us have children and we don't even care how many hairs on their head they have. The only time it seems to get our attention if it's nappy or if it starts falling out for some reason. That's the only time we pay attention to it. But we're so special that the very here he numbers. And he knows the count. And he's aware when one falls out. And he's aware when it's not your own. What am I saying? Under all of that, the you that goes home pushes that key in that lock and closes the door behind you. And there's nobody to show off or to act any type of way in front of. The you that sits there and wonders and shakes your head how on earth am I going to make it tomorrow? That you is the you he's concerned about. Be yourself. Your anointing exists in you being who God made you to be. You will reach who you're to reach by being you and not like somebody else. All your crazy package of self is for a purpose. They may not understand you, but it's not for them to understand. They didn't make you. 
There are some situations that are not understandable. And so God made you so you're not understandable to take on that challenge. Because if everybody was the same, what a world it would be. Romans 8.32 says, He spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not? How shall the Father, not with Christ, also freely give us all things? In other words, it's impossible for him not to give us. If he was willing to put his own son's life on the line for you, what can you name that is below that? Be yourself. If he wanted you to be like anybody else, he would have made you like that other person. Even twins have differences. Even twins. Let's look at 2 Kings uh, 6, verse 1 to 7. And I want to look at it from the viewpoint of using something that isn't yours. Using something that you borrowed. Second Kings 6, 1 to 7. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elijah, Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go we. And one said, Be content. I pray thee, go, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling, as one was cutting down a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, At last, Master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? <laughs> Where did it fall? Today's English. Amen. And he answered, and he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick, cast it in hither, cast it into the water, and the iron head of the axe did swim, meaning it began to float up. And he said, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and he took it. <coughs> There's discouragement everywhere. Yes. But what you give yourself over to is what will rule you. There are some that will make you feel where you are isn't the right place. And I'm talking about church, worship, and all this kind of stuff. They'll talk about all the nice things that are going on where they are. But they'll never reveal the bad. But you take yourself up and you follow them. Then only after you're gone and you go, you realize that you were at a much better place yes. before. And many, because of pride, will not return. They're ashamed. And so even where they're going, they won't be faithful to that. And slowly by slowly, we'll see Satan removing them. But you see, because their mind is so influential, yes. from time to time, they allow certain people to talk in their ears. And all of a sudden, the place where they are isn't working out. Amen. It's too small for them. Yes. And they need to launch out and do their own thing. 
Amen. Mind you, even though they have to go and do their own thing, it's really not with their own thing. It's not uh, uh, what they try to commit with is not uh, their own thing. They try to commit with it's with something else that is borrowed. Somebody else's thing that is borrowed. And we see that when they went and got the okay from the man of God, amen, the prophet, amen, we know we always think of how prophets operate. We're saying, well, he should have seen what was going to happen if he was going to go and uh, with this uh, young man and the axe head and that. Why didn't he stop him? Why did he go with them? Because you see, sometimes when you try to warn and talk to some people, they'll turn and trace you off. Amen. But you just don't want me to be better than you. You don't want you. You want me to stay under you. Amen. And so they cannot see properly until they find themselves in a situation. Amen. And they realize that it's not how they always thought it was. And the same man of God you wanted to leave the same man of God now that you're calling out to come and help you. And there are those that have come and said, the Lord said, for example. The Lord said this and the Lord said that. And I wouldn't stop them. But after they left, the news come back of what they walked into. And it leaves me wondering, do they really know the voice of the Lord? Did the Lord really speak to them? Be careful of the voice you're hearing. Making you think it's the voice of the Lord. Demons can imitate tongues. Demons can imitate experiences, even voices, to make you think it's the Lord speaking. When you think you stand, you've fallen from where you are. Demons can even try to intimidate presences. This lady texted me and said, can you call me and pray with me? I called her I said, what happened? She said, I, 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 I've been praying for the Holy Spirit. And I feel this presence around me. But I'm not sure. So if you could pray. And as I started to pray, demons started to manifest. And I said, what are you doing there? Said, I was sent. Sent for what? Because she wanted the Holy Spirit, I began to manifest a presence like the Holy Spirit. So she would accept this presence. So it's not every halalabashalaba you hear is the kesheramokotio, is the Holy Ghost. By what you hear or what you see. Know him for yourself. Amen. And many of these that have gone, when you talk to them and they hear how the church is doing, they're surprised because they never expected it to last this long or even reach where it reached. Amen. And even then they're shamefaced to, to come back or even to... And all they say, oh, I'll see if I can visit sometime. Yes. That's why it's very important to know the voice of the Lord. Amen. And not lie on Him. He will not lead you to a place to see you destroyed or cause you to lose passion and desire for Him. He will not instruct you to leave church, leave prayer meeting. Hallelujah. He will not instruct you. No, don't take communion. It's contrary to his nature. He will never tell you don't go to the house of God. A 
Kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. I remember I prayed for a, 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 a person one time to receive a, a, a prophetic mantle. And the person received it. They could see and they could prophesy. And I instructed the person, I said, listen, do not prophesy to anybody. People will come to you asking you to prophesy to them. What is God saying about this situation and that situation? And I say, don't do it. If you want, tell them, I said, I instructed not to do it. Because what will happen is when the Lord is not speaking, amen, because you're put on the spot, you will want to lie and say something the Lord didn't say just to get out of that situation, just to get the person off your back. Amen. So it's better you just flatly tell them up front, listen, I can't do it. Because it's not everything the Lord say you're supposed to talk. Amen. And not every time do we hear the Lord speak. Amen. And not every time do we see and some things we see and he says, I'm just showing you to make you aware. But be quiet and carry on as if nothing happened. Come on. Yeah. Wisdom is a godly thing. Yeah. So it's important to know the voice of the Lord. It wasn't until he lost this, this, this young man. He lost what, was, what he was borrowing. That he was able to see God begin to work. Amen. What he borrowed even though he was careful with it. Yet it never allowed him to operate freely with it. Why? It's just like when you borrow somebody's thing. You're always careful to make sure. Amen. Nothing happened. It don't scratch. Or nobody break it or anything. Because how on earth am I going to take it back to them? Amen. Hallelujah. If I order one the same way, will they know it is different? And so you're not free to do with it what you will. But when it's your own thing, amen, you can do whatever you will. And you don't care. But because it was borrowed, amen, he couldn't work like he wanted to work. He had to be very cautious when he was using it. His faith was tampered with. Because what he had belonged to another. Amen. That's why I say always seek the Lord for your own word. Amen. Hallelujah. When it comes to stand before his people. Amen. Or lead anything. Always talk to him and say, Lord, what is it that you want the people to know? What is it you want the people to hear? Amen. Because a lot of times, amen, we will try to put our own thing in it. Amen. To satisfy our own self. Amen. And we cannot speak out of a conviction. Amen. Especially if we're borrowing sermons and trying to preach somebody else's message. It came out under a different conviction. And so you preach it, but there is no weight behind it. Because it's not coming out of a real place. It's not yours. I went to this meeting one time, and and, and this bishop preached the message. And my God, it, it was it was it was good. He was just like flowing through it. I said, "Wow!" And someone said to me, "Google this part of the message." And when I googled it, there the whole message was by somebody else and he didn't give credit it's not wrong to to say what somebody else said or so but give credit say John Doe said whatever 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 this message was brought forth by John Doe and I asked the Holy Spirit to help him and I feel the Lord is leading me to inspire to but you don't go word for word and try to. And when I saw that, it hurt. Because this was someone that always said, seek God for the message. Press into God. And, and, and. But you see, there are many that are trying to do ministry. Trying to live this life. Trying to walk this Christian journey. Through the strength of another man or woman's gift. Yes. 
another man or woman's calling, another man or woman's prophecy, another man or woman's prayer, another man or woman's fasting, another man or woman's uh, actions or their faith, and never their own. But until that which has been borrowed actually falls from you, until that which isn't yours becomes jeopardized and puts you in a position, until what isn't yours is removed from you, you will never see the actual miraculous working miracle of God. Hallelujah. There are some that think it's the axe head that makes them who they are. It's the axe head that gave them the passage to do the work. Notice they all, amen, all the sons of the prophet were all working, cutting down beams all over the place. Yet only one was working with the thing that was borrowed, the thing that didn't belong to him. Yet he was cutting just like the others. Amen. But we are, uh, we read that the uh, we don't read of the others, amen, losing uh, and, 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 and any axe head, amen. We don't read of the others being jeopardized in any other way. They were using their own tools, uh, what was given to them, what they earned, amen. And so it was only pinpoint or highlighted or spotlighted out on the one that came came into the same company, amen, let me call him a fake, because amen, if you're going to move out and you're going to go to some place, amen, and try and act like you can provide for yourself, yourself, you should have your own things, amen, and not go with something borrowed, hallelujah, because there's going to be a time when you're going to need to use that way, that thing in the way that the person who lent it to you instructed you not to use it, and what are you going to do, but when it's your own, you can draw your sword any way you want to, swing it anyhow you want to hold your armor up, amen, don't care what is coming against you, you have the armor and you have the shield, it's yours, you don't care about the debt, all you care about is protecting yourself, eh? but when it belongs to somebody else, you mind how you swing, you mind how you hold that armor up, eh? you'll even put it down and run to find and look for shelter, because it is not yours, this young man went on an expedition to move out under the prophet's account ability or control because he was influenced by the others. Don't let the pressure of being around people who are gifted cause you to make a move that will jeopardize your footing in Christ. Don't cause it to cause you to start to lie and say the Lord said what the Lord didn't say because hallelujah, because everybody else is anointed. The God, God is talking to everybody so why not talk to me and so I'll just fake it until I make it. Think it until it becomes a reality. But the time is coming when your words is going to try you. Amen. And you're going to have to prove your faith whether it was thus said the Lord or it was thus said you. And when God speaks, it must come to pass. The Lord said there's going to be three days of darkness. Oh, no. <laughs> On such a date. Yes. And some would swear Jesus back up on the cross that it was from God. Yes, yes. The date has come and the date has gone. The only time I've seen darkness was when darkness was supposed to be. When it was, I think it was Lady Faith I heard listening to it. And my, my, my remarks was because I didn't feel it in my spirit. I said, oh, well, I guess we'll wait and see. Yes, yes. When you know the voice of the Lord, there is something in, in when he speaks that even when it isn't directly to you, it, it, it carries that thing in there that you can identify with. And when it isn't there, I don't care how much you ball, how much you talk in tongues, skip and yes. jump in and somersault and that. Yes. If it's not in there, it's just not in yes. there. Amen. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Let God be the truth. Yes. And every man alive. 
And that's why I, you don't see me get up and prophesy, 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 prophesy. Because it's not something to play with. People's eternity sometimes depend on it. People's next step in their destiny depend on it. People looking for direction, not to be scammed or emotionally kidnapped with it, but for the word of the Lord to go forth with it. Anybody can prophesy. Witches prophesy. Demons prophesy. What is the source? And even if demon or witch prophesy, God can shut it down. Yes. But when God speaks, his word stands for sure. Amen. Be yourself. Be encouraged. Stop trying to be like everybody else. I remember in Montreal, we had this guy in the church. The bishop might figure out who it was. And this guy was into Shambach. You know Shambach the preacher? And uh, he would come on in those days, uh, Sunday night, I believe it was on the way, driving home from evening church, night church. And any time we called on this guy to, to speak or testify or do anything, you could know what he was going to say because all you had to do was listen to the the, the, the Shamback service the week before. <laughs> Even his voice and his style was like Shamback. The whole thing was like Shamback. And you could see when his name was called to come up and do everything, the eyes would roll and the giggling would start because he knew this person was going to come up and be who he wasn't. And as much as you do the shakes and everything, because it didn't come out of a place of realness, you're the only one shaking. So, I cannot fight with your armor. I can't move the way I know I should because your armor is too heavy for me. You see, when you try doing things in someone else's armor, someone else's calling, the axe head sinking is prophetic. It will always cause you to sink and hold you back, delay you, and even block you from progressing. Because as everybody else was still cutting down, there you are, amen, couldn't continue your work. You had to call out for help. Yeah. And I'm sure some were remarking, well, what's he doing here if, he can, if what he has isn't even his? And until you cry out for help to the one that, amen, is almighty God. Until you cry out for help. Not from the one that had to pay money for their powers. Not to the one that has to go in the bushes at midnight to visit a barn house. Not to the one that has to go to the sea and bathe three times at midnight and spray yourself with special perfume. Until you go to the real source, will you ever be delivered? Until you cry out to the Lord, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. And so the Lord is saying, be encouraged. He's in control. Even when the news media make it look like he's not in control, he's in control. He can influence the hearts of the king. He can influence the hearts of media. Hallelujah. It was a psalmist that says he sits and he on his throne and he laughs at them. Because of the calamity he sees that's coming their way. And so he uses the foolish things. The things that the educated... And the scientifically minded 
the high society people say is foolishness. It's those things he will use to show that your wisdom and your knowledge is garbage. Be encouraged. He has not forsaken you. What was the message last week that was brought forth through prophetic word? New season. A new season. And if his plans was to destroy you, why would he tell you he's bringing forth a new season for you? It doesn't make sense. Stop worrying. Be encouraged. Have faith. Many of you, I, I said it before, you may have to uh, take the virus, the, the vaccine, to go back to school, go back to work, to travel, and we see where it's going now. Amen. And, and I said, you're going to have to prove your faith. And your faith can be proven two ways. And it's a personal decision for you. The church is not going to tell you what to do. You can either say, I'm not going to take it. I'm going to trust God to keep me. Or you can take it and, and, and say, well, his word says that if I drink or take up any poisonous or deadly thing, it will not harm me. Amen. Either way, you're covered. Amen. And he's not going to put you in a situation that is going to kick you out of heaven. No. Get rid of fear. Amen. Get rid of doubt. And trust him. If you say he talked to you about things, then ask him about this. He'll talk to you about it also. He's not a man that he should lie. Be encouraged, church. Let us know. It is finished. The battle is over.
we magnify you, we give you thanks because you're God and there is none other. We thank you, God, for your words, oh God Almighty Father, this afternoon that we should have faith in God. And we thank you, Jesus Christ, we come. We believe by faith, God, we're going to leave here trusting your word that you have never leave, never forsake. Lo, you are with us always, even unto the very end. And we bless you, we give you thanks, we give you praise. And Father, when we cannot hold on unto anything, we hold on unto your words. When we cannot see anything, God, we believe that you are the God who hear and answer. And Father, and even in this time, God, when our faith is tested, our faith is shaken, Jesus has said that you have overcome the world and we shall overcome also. And Father, we bless you. We give you thanks, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. And we pray even now that you will encourage our hearts. Holy Spirit, you live on the inside. I pray you will move. I pray that there will be a shaking from the very inside and there will be a transformation on the very outside of our lives even now in the mighty name of Jesus Father these are the days you told us about days dark days in the name of Jesus days oh God when our hearts fail days God when even when the righteous God Almighty Father fail these are the days God Almighty God, when there is no stock on the vine, there is nothing, God Almighty. These are the days, and Jesus Christ, to remind us of that the spirit of the Antichrist is fully at work. God, these are the days, and you have told us about Jesus, that man will reward good, and man will dispose of evil. These are the days, oh God Almighty, when they rather believe the life than a truth. But God might become by faith believing. God, we hold on to the old landmark. God, we align ourselves back up with the word in the name of Jesus. Although there is a blow, although there is a tempest, but you said this morning, have faith in God. In the name of Jesus, although we are trouble on every side, but our faith in God tomorrow is not guaranteed. But right now, we gotta have faith. Just send your word and it heal. In the name of Jesus, just send it. Say, have faith. That means there is something ahead. If you are saying, have faith. God, this is not the end. And we trust you. God, we believe. God Almighty, that you will take us through. In the name of Jesus, we hold on and to our faith. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, because of our faith, it shall make us whole. In the name of Jesus, increase our faith even now. And Father, we pray. God Almighty, for those who are listening and moving in our midst, God Almighty, your word said, I'm faith in you. So if there is a sick, we believe that you are the healer. In the name of Jesus, God, even if some are dying, you are the resurrection and you are the life. Father, if there's an unsaver, cry out even now, you are their savior. You have your sin bearer. You promise um, that you will heal uh, and that you will restore. Um, so I pray um, that one calling now, uh, receive that one Jesus. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, let them say um, uh, it is different now. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, cause them to experience um, that very difference. Uh, oh, glory to God. And, uh, Father, we pray. Uh, for those who are blessed, God Almighty Father, in their giving, tithe and offering, God Almighty, and even bless them with the overflow. God, you say, as long as this earth remains, there shall be seed time and harvest. And Father, what they bless you with, you have the ability to produce 
after the same kind uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, so Father, they bless you uh, with their money uh, in the name of Jesus. And uh, you have the ability, God, uh, to bless uh, and to increase them um, uh, in the name of Jesus. And, uh, so I pray uh, in these unprecedented times um, uh, when things are so low, uh, but as they bring uh, that sacrifice, uh, increase it, um, cause them to lend uh, and not to borrow. Uh, blessing press down, uh, shake it together um, uh, and run it over. Uh, your word said, um, uh, we will be above uh, forever uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, so we pray uh, as we give, um, uh, as we pray, uh, lift us up uh, in the name of Jesus. Um, God Almighty Father, the darkness is so thick, um, uh, but the light is shining uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, only one light uh, can make a difference. Um, uh, and you say, we are the light um, uh, of the world. Uh, a city uh, set up on a hill. Uh, God Almighty, the elements um, uh, are shaking. Uh, earth um, uh, is shaking. Uh, the laws um, uh, are shaking. Uh, everything uh, naturally is shaking. Uh, what God you said, um, uh, you will shake earth um, uh, and shake heaven. Um, uh, it's the only thing that cannot be moved. Uh, won't be shaken uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, so we trust you um, uh, and we believe you. Uh, as we go, we go in your power, we go in your grace, in the name of Jesus. Those who are hearing, we go in the power, we go by faith believing, knowing that our life is in with Christ and God, and we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Bless us together, God. God Almighty Father, we give you the praise, and Father, we lift our faith in triumph. And said, Jesus, um, you have overcome, and we shall overcome our soul. Have your fullest way in our life. Uh, we give you the praise, we give you the glory. In no other name. Uh, and the church of God said, uh, Amen. Amen. And Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. And we just lift our right hands. Um, glory, and we, we are. We just said the benediction. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest and abide with us all, even now and forevermore. And all God's people say with triumph. Amen. Let the church say, Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. God bless a reminder that there is Sunday school at 5 a.m. 5 p.m. Amen. See you there. God bless you.